In this video, I'm going to present a selection of the new features in the 2022 R1 release of ANSYS Mechanical. A large number of updates and enhancements have been added, some of which will necessitate dedicated demos of their own. So those presented here are chosen either in response to problems we have seen from our clients or simply things that we think will be the most broadly applicable. I'll start with some demos within Workbench to show those features that introduce some new workflow steps. Then I'll finish with some slides to cover some of the more formulation or solver related updates. Starting from Workbench, the first thing you'll see when you open a new mechanical session is a new geometry imports item in the tree. Geometry import is a means of assembling several geometries into, into a assembly into a single mechanical session. Previous workflow involved assembling at the mesh level several models or meshes or external models into a, a downstream system. Then your rigid transformations were performed at the workbench level as well. Now within mechanical, this can be done inside mechanical itself. Underneath geometry import, first you'll see uh, the, the usual upstream geometry cell this is the this is the primary import geometry import, and you can see uh, A3 is the cell from which that geometry is coming from. See here, A3. You still have your geometry objects as usual, uh, but now if you want to add additional uh, CAD geometries, you import at the geometry Im import stage. Here you're presented with the import preferences. For the primary import, those preferences are set as usual from the upstream geometry cell. For every secondary import, uh, those are selected on a per import basis and you'll be presented with this window. So I'll import my, the roof of my house. Just wait for that uh, CAD to be imported. Okay, so now I have my uh, additional uh, body here. If I want to then transform that as you would in the case of rigid transformations, I insert a part transform here. So I select the body I want to transform, move it up on and over. And here you see you get live real time uh, feedback, if you like, this wireframe, so you know uh, when you're, before you generate the transform you know that you're getting it getting it right. So I transform that. There's my assembled geometry. Got both bodies uh, underneath geometry as normal. Now, instead of the uh, update geometry from source, if any changes are made to these um, source geometries, I'll click on either one of these, go to the context um, ribbon for the geometry import, and you see this reload button. It does the same function. Uh, as the update geometry from source. You also have an option here if you want to replace that file with a different file um, and it'll just sub um, into the same position and you'll, you'll regenerate your transforms. As with every release, there are a lot of updates in the area of meshing. I'm just going to focus in on one new feature that we think will be useful for a number of our clients. This new feature is an additional criteria within name selection by worksheet which allows you to diagnose issues with your mesh. Here you see I have a body with some holes going through it. If I look at the mesh, I can see that those are being defeatured based on the settings that I've chosen. Here I'll insert a name selection by worksheet. First, I add a line to select the bodies in which I want to uh, search for issues. So I'm just going to select by material first. I then add this new action, Diagnostics, and depending on what entity I choose, I have some options here for the criteria. In face, I have the Defeatured Only, generate that. You can see those 20 um, holes that are being defeatured have been selected. If I change this to Mesh Element, I get a few different options here. Sharp Angle Elements, for example. I'm going to have a look at uh, Interference. You can see here, I need to have a think about um, maybe sharing these objects or uh, something else to take care of this uh, interference. 
Another means of interrogating the model at the mesh stage is new feature detection. I right click on model, go to feature detection. And I'm from here, I'm able to interrogate the model for fillets and holes. Here I have some fillets of 0.5 millimeters. Add another um, detection criteria, change that to holes. The name updates. Uh, I'm not sure what size the hole is, so I'm going to put a operator, let's say, less than one. And you also have this mesh treatment uh, option at the end here to say where I do find those, um, let's go in and map mesh them. Before I hit detect features, I'm just going to show what the mesh looks like to begin with. Not particularly uh, structured at the fillet or the hole. Go to feature detection, detect these features. You can see now that the mesh needs an update. Some name selections have been added. And upon updating the mesh, I see a bit more um, structured mesh uh, in the regions identified. Recently seen the addition of the resource prediction tool to predict the memory requirements for your given model. In 2022 R1, with beta options turned on, you'll now see more precise increments for both the memory required and the elapsed time expected for your simulation. We should see this tool improve continually with each release as the data used to improve the algorithms is real simulation data returned from ANSYS users. To turn on the beta options required to use this tool, we go to Tools, Options, Appearance, Beta Options. Substructuring is the procedure of condensing a group of finite elements into one super element. This super element can then be assembled into more complex structures for reduced computational cost. ANSYS have now added a new analysis system for creating these super elements, substructure generation. To demonstrate, I will first start from a static structural analysis system. From here, I'll insert my substructure generation. The existing part is one experiencing centrifugal um, forces. I can use this static structural result on my part to pre-stress the creation of the of the substructure. In the absence of a pre-stress, I can actually insert some loads and boundary conditions into the substructure analysis itself. To specify the interfaces at which the master degrees of freedom will exist, create interfaces at the points of connection uh, using either name selections or remote points. I then simply drag and drop into substructure generation and you can see these interfaces are now defined. Once I solve this analysis, I can then export this uh, super element for use in another system. This exported substructure will contain uh, the load vectors for a uh, harmonic response uh, using the mode superposition method as well. This last demonstration is to showcase the new capabilities within the structural optimization analysis system. Previously, once you had your optimized shape, you would need to return to work workbench and transfer to a new validation system in order to assess the performance of that part. Now, however, there are some preliminary post-processing options built into the analysis system itself. We also now have maximum principal stress available as both a constraint and as an objective. Introduced last year, the user-defined criteria is available for tailoring the optimization to your problem using available result quantities. This year, they've expanded upon some of the base results and scoping options available. To finish, I'm just going to cover a few slides to cover some of the more uh, solver side or formulation um, related enhancements. Just a slide here to show the sheer amount of enhancements that have been made at the mesh level. 
I uh, couldn't showcase everything in this video, but we will try and release um, some additional material on the weld meshing in particular, uh, quite a lot of enhancements in that area. Joint elements, so the penalty base formulation was introduced last year, I believe, uh, motivated by the issue of over-constraint that affects the uh, existing Lagrange multiplier method. So to alleviate the need for um, you know, expertise in applying these joints, uh, the penalty base formulation is a little bit more uh, forgiving and that's now been introduced for the modal-based and linear perturbation analyses. And I've got an example on the next slide uh, to, sh to showcase how the effect on your results is, is going to be minor. Just before I move on, spherical joints, uh, you can now define friction using a, a coefficient and radius under the details of the joint. Here we see the linear perturbation analysis example. Uh, these revolute joints run around the circum circumference of this model. In the bottom left, you see the results for the penalty-based and Lagrange multiplier uh, formulation. Really, really minimal um, effect on the results there. Okay, next one is potentially big for those running large models on large core counts. We have a new form of parallelism at the solver side uh, in between shared and distributed. So where shared, uh, all cores share a memory space and distributed, each core has a partitioned uh, memory space of its own. Hybrid is somewhere in the middle where you have a partially partitioned memory space shared by some cores. And that'll make a bit more sense on the next slide. But here we see the um, command lines used for, the, uh, for each respective um, parallelism. At the bottom there, you see the, an example. Uh, this will use eight processes with two threads per process. So the n times n, you get your total core count there. Here you see on the, the bottom right, a uh, good, illus good illustration of the, of the hybrid method, where you have this partially partitioned memory space uh, with some cores uh, sharing each of those uh, spaces. This Hybrid is a means of reducing the uh, total memory demand of the model uh, with only a minor um, penalty to the, to the um, speed up. So here we see uh, a large model example running on a high core count. And as you move up the um, number of threads per process, less processes. So NT1, that's equivalent to your uh, distributed you see almost a seven times reduction in the memory requirements with only a 20% uh, reduction in the speed up there. 